Well, you know, it's me through and through, Gary. I'm just so relaxed. It's just me all the time, because I know I'm going to be world champion. Display, brother. Again, we, we still don't know what he's like under pressure, but that's because he's so very, very... He's going to get stopped. He's going to get stopped or knocked out clean, believe me. Just slowed up a little bit in the last couple of rounds, maybe. And that's, that's just a slip. Now he slipped. And I think the referee stopped him. He stopped the... Style yourself a knockout artist and say you were going to dominate your... It's a slip, but even still, Sanchez is trying to float a Prince Lee's down and he wins. Sanchez again, slides down the front of him. Left, right, right. Leopard print shorts, dancing, and bold yet phlegmatic interviews, all combined with outstanding boxing skills, made Nassim Hamed a legend in the boxing world. In just about 10 years, the prince found himself at the pinnacle of the sport, earning more than all other featherweight division boxers combined. But how did he manage this? It all comes down to his showmanship, talent, and trash talk, through which the Brit not only captured attention, but also secured the most high-profile fights. Friends, in today's video, we will be talking about how Nassim Hamed answered for his trash talk. Don't forget to like, subscribe to the channel, and leave comments in four words. Well, let's get started. If dancers in the ring and legendary entrances like the airplane carpet flight, most things are more or less clear what was so special about Nassim's style. While the majority boxed following a proven formula, not trying to come up with something unique, Hamed and his trainer Brendan Ingle shattered all the molds. Ingle noticed the talented young boy in his childhood and invited him to his gym. Instead of crushing his individuality, Ingle decided to nurture the most unconventional boxer in history and over the years we can say he succeeded. Hamed's main feature was his defense, entirely based on reflexes and intuition, dismissing the traditional high guard as nonsense. He's fighting out of that high held guard. Just in addition to his high level defense, backed by incredible speed, the future champion also distinguished himself with devastating knockout power. Typically, mobile boxers win fights on points, but the Prince, with his unconventional attack angles and natural strength, scored knockouts almost as frequently as any heavyweight. Somebody is going to connect like that left hand from Nassim. It was precisely his fighting style that made the greatest contribution to Hamed's popularity in the early stages of his career and helped the young talent reach a title fight against the highly dangerous Steve Robinson in just three years. The champion had a whopping seven title defenses, while the prince was just a talkative young lad with a record of 19 and 0. At least that's what the fans thought back then. Nassim entered the ring and effortlessly dealt with the top opponent for seven rounds, then knocked him out in the eighth. Just slowed up a little bit in the last couple of rounds, maybe. And that's, that's just a slip. The fights, I wondered if he'd lost his... His footing a bit too. Yes, it looked a bit like that, but yeah. his legs went so violently away oh, from him, right. didn't they? Yeah, yeah. It was a sort of delayed action for. From that moment, Nassim began investing more money in his famous image and staging epic entrances, helping to sell fights and advance his career. With each new victory, his purses increased and his legacy solidified. In 1997, the Prince claimed the IBF title by defeating Tom Johnson. <laughs> after which he had two fights as a double champion, but then relinquished the belt due to disagreements with the organization. Hamed refused to defend against the mandatory challenger and instead faced Jose Badillo, whom he knocked out in seven incomplete rounds. Did the prince get scared of a tough fight and therefore give up the belt? It wasn't about that. The IBF was tying the Brit's hands, preventing him from fighting the best and earning big money, which was the main goal of the showman. Having freed himself from the organization's constraints, Nassim had a warm-up fight and then issued a challenge to the most dangerous opponent in his career, Kevin Kelly, who was watching the future opponent from the front row. Kevin Kelly's here tonight and he's seen, he's seen the skill of the Prince and the strength 
and the ability and the accuracy and the speed. Oh gosh, you know I'm the best in the world. He's right in front of me and I can honestly tell him that I'm going to knock him spark out. I'm going to knock his spark out. What are you going to say to that, guys? Relax, 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 baby. You relax. You are getting knocked out. Let me tell you. In your hometown. Wow, she had a great performance. At New you're nice, York. You're nice and hyped. Medicine That's Square fine. Garden. But I'm the real deal. I can't deal. wait to beat you up. I'm the real deal. I can't wait. I'm going to face and I'll take your face. Go on, go on, go on. Look I'm going to go. smoke your boots. We'll see. Jackson, tell him. Well, I feel like this. Calm down. I, I feel like this. You know, I came back to uh, England before to watch Niles fight one time when he fought Tom Johnson. I said they would beat Tom Johnson because the styles make fights. I feel like this. He's a good fighter. He's a good fighter. Hey, if he didn't think he was a good fighter, he could not do the job. I feel I'm the best fighter because he's the best fighter. As I say, let's party. I'm a party crasher. You'll be surprised, but all the commotion and the cool dialogue that captured the audience's attention were part of Hamed's cunning plan to quickly sign a contract with HBO. Nassim had long wanted to fight Kelly as he was recognized as the best featherweight boxer in the USA and a victory over him would automatically make the prince a star across the ocean. Among with popularity came a substantial sum of money. Starting from the bout against Kelly, Hamed automatically became a millionaire because contractual obligations with HBO came into effect, offering him $12 million for six fights. Now. You must be wondering, was Kevin really that good? By 1997, the American had a record of 47-1 and one, and just a couple of years ago held the WBC belt, although he lost it due to a corner stoppage against Alejandro Gonzalez. You can't see. Now the trouble's here. You can't see. My eyes are almost shut. Fight's over. Oh, no. Despite the unfortunate loss, fans still, and not without reason, perceived Kelly as the best boxer in the category and he managed to secure six victories before Nassim challenged him. The epical battle between the two strongest representatives of the division was scheduled for the end of 1997 and in the lead up to the fight, the prince continued to stir the pot. You ain't Prince Nassim and after this fight, listen, I'm gonna like trying to create a nice job for you putting my posters up with HBO. <laughs> Believe me, after this fight, right, you'll have a full-time job, forget about boxing. All you have to do is go to Lou DiBella, he give you a I nice tell you job, what. put it promoting my ass in Times Square every time I come here. I tell you what. The showdown between Hamed and Kelly was so significant for boxing that the entire New York was literally adorned with HBO posters featuring stars of the featherweight division. Interestingly, there were far more images of Nassim and journalists directed more questions to him than to Kevin. As you can see, the image along with the incredible fighting style played a role and made the prince the most talked about boxer leading up to the fight. Hamed was delighted with such public attention, but on camera, as usual, he remained calm and self-assured, continuing to taunt Kevin. Pure posters up, pure billboards and everything. HBO just looking at their long-time investment. They aren't looking at Kevin Kelly and the rest of the fighters on the bill. And you think the other fighters were upset about that, that they've very, given you the, the contract? Very upset, but I don't blame HBO because there's only one winner, out, one winner out of all of us, and that's myself. Furthermore, the prince with incredible confidence and a touch of audacity spoke of his invincibility. I don't know how you can even ask me that, Adam, and I shouldn't really even answer that silly question. To me, that is a silly question. Uh, there's no way that I can lose, so I'm not going to answer it as if... I'm not going to answer it the way you said it to me. What if you do lose? That'll never happen. So that's all I'm saying. That can't happen. It won't happen. Finally, after weeks of preparation and bold interviews from the seam, the day of the fight arrived. According to the genre's laws, the main talker had to face the consequences and now we will see how it all unfolded in reality. Hamed didn't disappoint American fans with a quick entrance into the ring. Instead, the prince orchestrated a shadow play, taking on the role of the main actor and dancing for almost 10 minutes to the main theme of Men in Black. Such behavior infuriated Kelly, who was burning with the desire to get into the fight quickly, but he couldn't do anything about it. Finally, the match began. Both fighters adopted a southpaw stance, which often leads to a prolonged and rather dull shootout, but not on that evening. 
Hamed immediately took the center of the ring and unleashed supersonic jabs, most of which Kelly absorbed with his face. The local boxer's counterattacks were all parried by Hamed, who didn't forget to play to the crowd by moving his shoulders. Right eye, it seems to react as soon as it's touched by any punch. Well, you saw the swelling in the Derek Gaynor In fight. the middle of the round, the Brit started pressuring his opponent and even cornered him, but he focused too much on the attack, missing a right hand punch and finding himself in a knockdown. The fight is on no matter what. If it goes in the sixth round, he still believes that I can get a knockout, so he's willing to waste a few rounds. First two minutes of the fight, Hamed is a puzzle that Kelly is unable to solve. But down Kelly down. raised his hands, celebrating his initial success, but it was too early to draw conclusions. The end of the round was calm, but what happened after the break was extraordinary. Kelly's right hand punches increasingly reached the head of the previously elusive Hamed, and from a couple of precise hits, what happened would be that the prince was exposed as a fraud. The Prince twice found himself in flash knockdowns, but only one was countered. Things were looking bad for the Brit, but he didn't lose composure and soon landed a sharp right during a stance change. Yet as yet. I think the mistake he made. Kelly didn't see the punch and immediately fell into a heavy knockdown. From this moment, Nassim began gradually taking control of the fight. He seemed to adapt to the American style, started slipping more frequently, circling from different angles, and showering light punches with his lead hand. They trade right hands. Kevin's was the harder of the two. Good left uppercut by Prince Nassim. Right hand. The fourth round began, and at first everything was still calm, but soon Hamed started putting a lot of power into his left punches. He lands a couple power punches. Kevin Kelly lands a hard left hand. It seemed like the Prince decided to play cat and mouse, preparing for a knockout. Kelly's chin withstood the first serious punches, but soon the talent in leopard print shorts twice hit him with a strong left punch, securing a knockdown. But taking some leather in return. Down goes Kelly. The Prince went for the finish, but again got too carried away, and during one of his dodges, touches the canvas with his glove which the referee counted as a knockdown. Here. You gotta be careful mixing up with Kelly because he can fight. Understanding that he wouldn't have more chances, Kelly went all in and lunged at the champion. Hamed had a tough time and a couple of punches touched his face, but his reflexes didn't fail him. The Brit managed to evade and then stung Kelly with a crown left. And it's a knockout. And a hard left. After such a bright and insanely epic bout with numerous unpredictable plot twists, the Prince delivered a well-crafted speech, breaking down everything that happened and even showing respect to Kevin. First of all, I come out of the first round and I know my jab was too clean and nice and fast, but still, I wanted a bit of a fight. I wanted to cause so much excitement in this arena. It's my first night, it's my first fight in New York, Madison Square Garden, and I wanted to show the people here that I can fight. I can take it on the chin and I can give it. End of the day, he caught me with some great shots, all due respect to Kevin. But I wanted to, I wanted to basically take him out and I wanted to, I just really want to show all my skill on, this, on the night. I wanted to make it look exciting for everybody. So I had to take some shots, but I give my shots. Now I took his, but did he take mine? This fight showed the world that Nassim Hamed is not just another prospect raised on a heavy bag diet in his native Britain, but a true champion with ingenious technique and equally impressive trash talk. From that moment on, every appearance of the Prince became a grand event for boxing fans worldwide less frequently than before, approximately twice a year. Gradually, he delved deeper into business and ventures unrelated to boxing. In 2001, during his fifth visit to the USA, he suffered his first career defeat. But that's a story for another time. And that's it. Did you enjoy the video? Then be sure to subscribe to the channel. Would you like to see a documentary about the career of the great showman and knockout artist Nassim Hamed? If so, share your thoughts in the comments and don't forget to hit the like button. If we reach 1,500 likes, we'll tell you all about the life journey of the legendary prince.